Welcome back to Track Talk. Tonight we'll be jumping right into a game of 1870. We've done this game several times before, so let's just uh, get it started. George is leading this off in the auction, and he's bidding on the shipping company. Um, good synergy with the GMO private, and uh, one of my favorite privates in the game. Um, not necessarily the greatest long-term consequences, but nice for some early game revenue. Henry, he is going on cattle. This uh, in contrast, is one of my least favorite privates. I don't um, care all that much for it. Uh, decent value to revenue ratio, I suppose, um, and leaves you with capital um, for you know contesting other auctions, perhaps, but not the most exciting power. John contesting Gulf shipping. Frank is going for the Mississippi Bridge. This is um, a pretty potentially consequential private, and it also incidentally opens up for an early pull. George may want to go on Southern Cattle just to prevent Henry from pulling early here, which is what we see. And now Henry has the decision of whether or not he wants to go for a more expensive private or just pull and hope to contest um, the Southern Cattle. I assume he's going to go on Katie, um, but we'll see. Taking the SLSF, um, not a not a private that I prefer, but uh, he only had two options there, so it makes sense. John, he is joining on Mississippi Bridge, so now we have a bunch of contested um, privates at least, and Frank is going to be rounding us out for the second uh, go-around, and he goes on the KD. So now the players need to be very careful that they don't give these more expensive privates away um, for face. I think they need to make sure they're able to contest. George, however, is already on two privates. I think all the players are on two privates at this point, and um, may not have the liquidity to be able to really contest uh, effectively. He does um, go on the St. Louis, and Henry going on the Katie. Okay, so now everybody has um, a contested private, and it's really just up to whoever blinks first and wants to pull. John, um, he's on Mississippi Bridge and Gulf, two of the cheaper privates, so he may be content to pull and just let the other players tie up all their liquidity in these privates. We'll see. He does. Okay. So he gets a cheap um, early private, and then we'll see if he's willing to um, bid up this Mississippi Bridge. If he bids this up, Frank is going to have a little bit of a hard time price enforcing the KD on Henry. But Henry is on three quite expensive privates, um, or at least two quite expensive privates. So that may not be bad for the table. I think that um, John and Frank should feel to feel free to bid this up as they please. And having said that, it looks like he immediately passes, and John gets the uh, Mississippi for just 50. So I think he's probably pretty happy with the way this auction has worked out so far. Um, two cheap privates, one of which is a pretty um, consequential power. Moving on to Southern Cattle, um, George and Henry. These are the same two players that are on the St. Louis. Um, so if I'm playing this situation, I'm probably going to bid this up just a little bit to try and tie up my opponent's capital and then uh, get a cheaper St. Louis. I'll also note that George is on the Gulf shipping, so if you're Henry and you bid this up just a little bit, you may be able to um, exhaust all his liquidity and get a really cheap uh, SLSF. We'll see if that works out. Henry passes immediately, and George will take it. So I think it would have been safe to bid once there, but maybe he didn't want to risk it. He just wants to, um, like I said, use up all the liquidity and get a cheap um, St. Louis. Gulf shipping now, George and John. Um, John, this is the last private he's on, so I don't imagine that he's very motivated to win this. Uh, may want to just price and force a little bit. George overbidding, and John immediately passes, kind of as expected. He'd already had two privates. Um, seems fair to pass there. St. Louis and San Francisco, we'll see if uh, Henry's strategy here with that early pass on the Southern Cattle pays off and he gets a cheap uh, St. Louis. Henry, George going up to 165, and Henry actually passes. Does that mean he's leaving with no no privates? I guess we'll have to look. St. Uh, St. Louis probably powering for 100, and it does. And Henry, okay. So I think I misread that a little bit. Henry was actually on the two most expensive privates, so uh, decided to sacrifice the SLSF for the um, chance at the KD. Both of these players have left the auction with zero privates so far, so could potentially see this bid up quite high. Um, it is a good private and a good company, but um, one of these players is going to be leaving with nothing. I don't know if that's worthwhile. 
175 and it goes for just 180. Um, that's a pretty good deal. Um, I think Henry should be happy with that. Frank leaving with no privates. I think that's a little bit of a rough position. You do want those privates to loot the companies and uh, uh, regain some of your, or basically just get more liquidity for a second company. This does give Frank the opportunity um, to steal the KD, and he could potentially do that. It is a good company. Let's see if he's looking to do that. He's just going to pass. Um, that's an interesting decision because he had his choice of IPOs here. Um, all the companies in this game, to some extent, are viable. Um, and he just is going to let the other players decide what to do. I think that may be a consequence of not knowing exactly how this uh, river company is going to play. So he could be concerned that if he pars the wrong company and the river doesn't open up, um, he could be kind of neutered. Uh, in the early game, so maybe looking to see how that uh, develops. But that said, you could start a you can start a company in the West, um, the Fort Worth or the Texas Pacific, and get some pretty good early game track, decent runs, and not have to worry about this river at all. So certainly, I can understand maybe not um, wanting to start the ick, you know, without knowing the, what the river's going to do. But still in the still in the Katy, very reasonable. These companies, yeah, he had a lot of options there. I'm surprised to see a pass. But that said, pass is what we see, and George is up on the SLSFF. I don't imagine he's going to buy more shares, probably just wants to sit on the two-share presidency, leave that market to pay into his company, but we'll see. He's passing as well. Henry, probably taking KD for a high par. Um, not the highest par, but uh, is locking in his presidency, so I'm sure he's happy about that. And then John, last player, he is taking Cotton. Cotton um, with the bridge uh, indicates to me an early buy-in, so I think that the other players should be feeling confident that they can float behind him and expect to be able to uh, run their companies. So maybe we'll see these first two players, or at least Frank, um, uh, capitalize a, a company now that we have seen the River Company um, declare their strategy. Frank um, does feel more confident now and starts the ATSF. Um, ATSF is a good company and synergizes nicely with the KD. Generally see them work together, at least in the early game, um, since the track is so synergistic. And this raises the question of why do this um, around late? He could have done this exact play earlier um, with basically the same outcome, but now he's going to be losing priority potentially. George, he is buying the cotton. Cotton... Um, doesn't have any synergy really with the Great River shipping. Um, I'll be curious to see if cattle gets used for cotton. I've seen that done before. Um, we'll just have to see. And I think I may have just mistaken the Great River shipping with the Gulf shipping. The Gulf shipping is the more important private. This one um, is just basically a blocker. So everybody's just floating their companies. And it looks like Katie is first to float. Frank, he is continuing to float his company, not getting any help from the other players. Henry, he is passing. The Cotton has now passed. And it looks like ATSFF is going to be the last to float. So Frank just slowly plinking away at that. And... All the companies have now floated. I expect we'll be seeing everybody pass, and George will be leaving with priority. Looks like that is indeed the case. So as is quite common in 70, the SLSF is up first and has a decision. Does he want to lay track to link up with the KD and the ATSFF, or is he going to start heading south and potentially coordinate with the cotton player? Um, it's a little cheaper to head north, but with two players up there, they could lay tragic track for you collude with one another to shut you down. So um, really no clear decision here. It's uh, very situational and just based up to your personal risk, risk tolerance. And looks like he is looking to link up with the cotton player. Probably has to hope for green track. Um, alternatively, could race into Little Rock, but I believe with the river... Um, private, the cotton player will be able to beat him there. 
So if there's no green um, before the next time he upgrades or operates, there's a chance that he will not have a run, which would be pretty bad news. He buys a single two train, which is not going to really accelerate the rush into threes. We'll see if the other players want to buy multiple two trains. Um, ATSF uh, laying towards Katie and then also to the off board, presumably, and laying Katie's home. So this leaves Katie with the uh, option of linking up with the Springfield tile, um, the SLSF home tile. And I imagine we'll see that happen. It would be possible for him to um, head to the dits for runs, but I don't know. I don't know if denying the run from the SLSF player who only has a single two train is really worthwhile. He buys a single two train, cottons up. He uses the um, private lays his home, and immediately links up with the SLSF. So it looks like all these players are looking to play friendly, and we'll see rather early track development as a result. Personally, if I'm the uh, Cotton player, I think I would lay these two tracks towards Little Rock, assure my run, and then allow the SLSF player to build this track for me. I'd probably even buy two trains um, to assume I would have that route. I don't see a need to build the SLSF player's track for him. He buys a single two train, so a pretty slow start to these trains. And Katie, he is going to link up with the SLSF. So this player is pretty happy with the way the track is developed, um, but he only has a single train, so he's not going to be taking advantage of all this track just yet. If you're the Katie player, on the other hand, you may very well want to pick up two two trains here. You're not going to be opening up the threes for anybody behind you and operating, and uh, you have the track for him. Just buying a single two train for now. Um, so very kind of conservative, friendly play early in the game here. George buys the ATSFF, and now the other players have to decide how much they value priority. I imagine if you're Henry, you're worried that John is just going to sit on $78 and not um, buy a share to get priority on you. We'll see if he has that concern. He does buy the cotton, and John actually selling a cotton, or redeeming cotton, sorry. Um, important to redeem shares it does protect them and it also artificially limits the amount of shares that are available um, to players in the late game so even though there are 10 players or 10 companies in this game um, the number of shares that end up being available in the late game can be very low um, just because a lot of these companies will end up with you know two maybe even three shares redeemed and deny them uh, from purchasing so Redeeming early shares protects them. Um, it does deplete your company cash, but you're basically guaranteeing that you have some sh some uh, IPO shares to pay into your company until you decide to reissue, if ever. <clears throat> Frank, he is also redeeming share, so uh, twins, the same uh, same thought. George is passing, Henry passing, John using that new cash to buy his own IPO. Uh, IPO. And again, he now controls uh, effectively 70% of this revenue, not including that IPO share, as opposed to before he only had 60%. So he's just um, kind of protecting his own company. Frank, he's doing the same strategy. And he actually has a little bit of a healthier IPO, so potentially in a little bit of a better position than Cotton. And generally speaking, the ATSF is just a better company, better map position, more tokens. Um, so I favor him over John if the uh, positions are identical. John still with cash for share. Does he go back and buy Katie here? Uh, he's going to pass, which I don't know if I agree with that. Um, he's going last in priority or second to last in priority. I think when you have those decisions, you might as well just pick up the paying share. We pass into the operating round in SLSF, probably a little bit regretting not buying two two trains, but in honesty, if he had bought two two trains, maybe we don't see the other players lay all this friendly track for him. Running for just 40, pays it out, does it pick up another train? Does need to be a little bit conscience, uh, or conscious of opening up the three trains now, um, especially that there's only three two trains left. So for that reason, may want to keep the game a little bit slow. But I believe this player's fallen behind on private revenue anyways. Uh, actually has pretty good private revenue, so it's probably in his interest to slow the game down. May have just let the other players push through to these uh, three trains. He does buy a second two train. And now he needs to be a little bit careful that he doesn't um, allow all these players to buy in their privates and then float new companies and buy through into the fours because then he would be falling back trainless if they decide to trash his shares. We'll see how that plays out. ATSF, heading towards the offboard, 
and running for just 40. Doesn't have two runs, but may pick up a second train here um, because he will have two runs in the next operating round. Alternatively, could just see him buy through into the um, threes. He is the player with no privates, however, so unlikely to see him open up privates for the other players. Cotton's up, probably heading to the Little Rock. He does, working over to his destination. I will, um, again, point out that he did not lay, need to lay these tracks. He could have just headed towards Little Rock and then had two more tracks um, west this operating round and been getting to his destination a little bit faster. I think it's highly likely that the SLSF would have been giving him this track anyways, and he could always guarantee a run with Little Rock with just one-two train anyway. So I don't fully understand that decision. Running for 40 pays it out and also not interested in breaking into the privates. Katie now, no real track for him, just running his train for 40, and we're into stock round three. So very slow start to this game, very passive play, um, friendly play, some things that I think could be done better by several players. Um, looks like the only person with money for shares is John, um, and we'll see if these players are able to redeem the um, last IPO shares in order to protect their, um, their companies. George passing, Henry passing. John, is he going to redeem another share? He is buying a ATSF from the IPO, so depleting your opponent's uh, IPO is always very important. And still has the opportunity to redeem and then buy a cotton share if he wants. Looks like he's just trashing the ATSF. And we'll see if there's any price protection going on here. Um, Frank actually does not have the cash, so won't be seeing that. Um, I don't know that trashing your opponent's shares here is really worthwhile. He's not changing operating order, and the ATSF doesn't care about the privates coming out, personally, because he has no privates to buy. So, I don't know, buying and selling a share just for the purpose of trashing value? Not super high yield. Frank has to pass. Interesting that neither of these players are redeeming their final IPO shares. I would have expected to have seen that. I keep saying redeeming IPO, of course you can't do that, but redeeming one of their own shares and then buying from the IPO as we saw in the last stock round is what I mean, and I'm surprised uh, they're not doing it again. That strategy can be a little bit hard on your early game um, company treasury, but we've seen a very slow start to this game, so if you redeem a share and then it's a slow game, it's going to pay dividends, literally. Um, John, he is redeeming his share, so now we see him going back for that strategy. Okay. And it looks like he's the only one interested in doing it. So now he has 80% of the uh, company's revenue locked in for basically the entire game unless he decides to make a change. And of course, he still has liquidity. If someone wants to sell one of these shares, he could potentially price protect it. So he's going to be trying to make this uh, cotton into a monster. Unfortunately for him, cotton often struggles to become a monster just as a result of its limited tokens. So would have liked to see this strategy on one of these other companies, but uh, we'll see if this works out for him. John is um, using his capital to invest in the SLSF, and while it's a very expensive share, it will have double the revenue of everybody else until green at least, so reasonable decision. He is slowly pulling ahead in this game in terms of share and uh, just kind of game presence. I think that largely comes down to the other players just playing pretty passively. And we're into the operating round. Um, SLSF is still up and has no valid track. So it's just running for 80, pays it out, doesn't buy any trains. ATSF going to be linking up with the offboard and has um, a $50 run, just slightly better than it was before. And Cotton still heading west, I assume. Yep, going to have some track costs coming up for it, but with those treasury shares, um, should be paying into his treasury quite well. Really should consider picking up another two train at least. Pays out for 40. Nobody's interested in these trains. This is a very slow game. Katie, just uh, running the same and sitting on a single two train. So looking at this, um, I guess the player that is most incentivized to buy the trains is potentially the SLSF because he has the most privates. Um, that's actually not true. The Katie player is pretty incentivized too. Um, but just looking at it, the SLSF is the player that has already bought a second um, two train. So maybe not interested in train locking himself to open up threes for the other players, which is very reasonable. So I guess this uh, 
responsibility of buying trains and pushing things really falls on the Katie player. And it's a little bit hard for me to understand why he's not doing it. Um, he has a very high uh, value private to buy in and he has the opportunity to buy the trains to do it. So hard to explain that. Frank, he is redeeming share and it looks like um, both the cotton and the ATSF both have two of these reserve shares now. So pretty similar um, situations. He could have done that the last operating round. Um, a little bit surprised we didn't see that. George, he is buying the his own presidency in the SLSF. Maybe a little bit worried um, from some pressure for John, but in reality, John would have to sell quite heavily to pressure this presidency. So really pretty safe. Doesn't have to buy his own shares. Could buy paying shares in other companies and um, deplete their IPOs. The SLSF uh, revenue is the highest, but that may change at the drop of a hat, so not really a huge priority. Henry, he is buying the ATSF, and the ATSF is now sold out. We'll be floating up um, unless there's a sale. John, nothing to do. Frank, he buys a KD, makes sense. And it looks like everybody else is passing, so it looks like George will leave a priority, and he is incidentally op operating the first company. Still in yellow, nothing to lay any track. Running for 80, pays it out. ATSF, no track for him either. And he is buying a second train. So now I think Katie will, will buy a two and then a three to uh, buy in his private. So we should be seeing uh, the game accelerate here. This was a very slow start. And SSW is going for the very early link up with the Fort Worth token. Um, will not be able to reach it for a destination run without a three train, but as noted, uh, three trains are just around the corner. So probably going to be seeing that in the next operating round, would be my guess. He is half paying. Um, not entirely sure why. I don't believe he has a private to buy in. He does, um, but it's only a $40 private, so that's a little bit hard to explain, um, especially when he owns 80% of the company. Um, yeah, should probably just be full paying. He buys a two and a three, so he's actually going to do the dirty work for the KD. Um, I really like the KD's position here in terms of just a really easy private buy-in. And we are into green now. This also gives uh, KD the first green track to run and uh, his choice of token on Springfield, which I think uh, we will see him snag. So randomly <laughs> laying track to bypass Topeka. This is hard for me to... Um, put my mind around. I imagine it makes more sense to upgrade a city for the extra revenue, and then if you're going to upgrade a city, you might as well snag the early game token, um, just because these uh, kind of center line cities really end up being choke points for the later game. So that's uh, an interesting decision. Buys the three, should be buying in his private, actually buys two threes, okay? So the other players need to be on notice here, um, SLSF and ATSF in particular, sitting on just two trains. Um, we're seeing the three trains fly off the shelves, may see one or both of these companies fall back. SLSF is probably a little bit safer because it's um, run to the right and it has such a high stock value, should be able to operate first, or at least early enough that not all the threes go away. But um, I think the ATSF is running a little bit afraid here. So buys in his private, um, is not able to buy in his private for max value. Um, and I think that's because he decided to buy two, three trains. When you only own 50% of the company, you got two players already mooching. Is it really worth um, buying the two, three trains? Especially if you're not building good routes, um, leaving yourself with no money with tokens? Eh, I don't know about that. I think I would have liked to see him play that a little bit differently. Defer the second, third train, secure a token for himself, buy a single three, and... Uh, just run uh, until kingdom come, basically. George, he is selling out of the ATSF, probably seeing the writing on the wall here that this company may be falling back trainless before it can operate. And Frank does not have anywhere near enough liquidity to protect these shares. So this is going to be hurting the um, share value for this company and making it more likely that as these news companies float, um, it's going to be falling back. Also selling out of the KD. Um, interestingly, he sold Frank's company first. And then uh, Henry's company, so if we look at operating order here, should have done that in reverse order so that he could potentially get a back-to-back -back stock action um, if Frank were to price protect. But actually, now that I think about it, Frank doesn't have the cash to price protect, so that's moot. Um, Cotton, 
if he sells that, also will not be able to price protect. So George, unfortunately, doesn't have the ability to do that slick move where you um, leapfrog and buy two shares in a row with a price protection. Sells the SLSF, which is, I believe, his own company. Um, oh, sorry, he bought the SLSF. Okay, makes more sense. Now we see the failed price protections, and Henry is up buying, actually selling the ATSF. So this company is going to be tanking in market value, and Henry has enough liquidity to be floating the companies, which I think we'll be seeing. He is buying the Fort Worth, okay? So he is taking advantage of all the track laid by the cotton and going to be stealing uh, his lunch money, so to speak, preventing that synergy between the Fort Worth and the cotton presidencies. John really doesn't have enough cash or liquidity to float a company. May just see him sell a share to buy um, a different share in potentially the KD, for instance. He's passing Frank, really not that much cash. He is redeeming a share from the market, so he has a full uh, redemption of the ATSF, no more shares to protect from him uh, by buying them into his company, and as a result, controls 90% of the revenue for the rest of the game uh, unless he decides to change something up. Very good position in a pretty good company, but again, um, at risk of falling back trainless here. However, with only company floating, uh, only a new company floating behind him should be feeling pretty secure. George? He buys another SLSF, so these are very expensive shares um, in a company that is going to be looted of a lot of cash by buying in his privates and buying some green trains in just a moment. Henry, he is continuing to float the Fort Worth. Pretty low par. Um, a little bit unfortunate for him that he couldn't float higher, especially when his other company has zero dollars in it. John, doing nothing. Frank, also passing George. He buys the, no, he's passing as well. So it looks like we're just seeing the Fort Worth uh, float, and it has now floated, maybe seeing John leave with priority. Fort Worth sells down a share, and what does he go back and buy? A SLSF. So this company's IPO is being rated, and only has 30% of the company left, which is pretty bad news for this company, which really relies on a high um, par to capitalize it throughout the game. Looks like we will be seeing John leave with priority, and we are back to the SLSF. So both the SLSF and the ATSF need to secure one of these three trains, or else they're going to be in a little bit of a painful situation. Um, SLSF probably needs to consider getting this token in Kansas City. Um, Kansas City is a pretty good revenue center, and uh, with the track laid, with this green track, he's guaranteed to be able to run out of Kansas City, even if he loses out on the token at Topeka. Um, so pretty... Pretty important token for him. Instead, going to be token in Memphis. Uh, I don't know about that. Um, Memphis, he does want to head down south to his destination, so Memphis is important, but he can bypass Memphis without too much difficulty, and I think this Kansas City token is more valuable in the long term. Is there a lot of competition for this Memphis token? I doubt it. Um, Springfield would have to be upgraded before Memphis, and we are assuming that Cotton is going to be laying towards Fort Worth. So he's probably not going to upgrade this token and then allow, for instance, the KD to upgrade Springfield for this token slot. So again, this is an example, I think, of players laying track for one another, which they really don't need to. We saw the Cotton player lay track for the SLSF, and now I think we're seeing the opposite. Um, so maybe that was planned. Maybe they're colluding or just returning the favor. I don't know, but it's not the way I think it should have been done. He tokens in Memphis, fair enough, runs for 90, and he is able to assign the shipping, it looks like. And he's going to get a little bonus there, so I suppose that's why he's making this decision. He's going to run both trains out of that company for a little bonus, but it eh, seems short-sighted. I think that uh, late game, this is going to come back to bite him. Looks like he's also assigning cattle. Um, so assigns that to Springfield and is running um, for 150 as a result. Pretty good revenue. Um, I don't think I was accounting for this in, in my calculus of why he was buying those shares that he was buying. But again, I think he had other options. Buys the three train and could buy a second three train. But I don't think there's much reason to. Other than potentially, if he buys this three train, can Cotton buy the four before the ATSF runs? No. Um, cotton would be train locked. So I think he probably pauses here on a single three train, but he buys both. Okay. 
Well, he does have um, good runs for both those strains right now, so he's going to um, be running very hot in green, but then it's going to be struggling um, later in the game if he cannot uh, get some more capital into this company. Really needs to start redeeming shares, but um, they're going to be so expensive, it's going to be hard for his company to do that. Cotton has um, four trains and exactly enough money for the uh, token, which I think is no accident. Um, so does he token in Springfield right away? I'm not sure. I assumed he was going to be laying towards Fort Worth, but I didn't realize he had exactly enough money for the token. So he does lay to Fort Worth. Um, with the three train, we'll be running his destination run for a little quick infusion of cash. And they want to um, drop a token in order to run two of his trains. Or three of his trains, I should say. So he tokens in Little Rock of all places. That's an interesting decision. I don't think that's a very good token. Um, and as a result of that, we'll be running uh, three of his trains, it looks like. Runs for 160, uh, just as good as the SLSF, which is another reason why I don't know that all this shenanigans with the Memphis token was really worthwhile. You um, wasted a token and you know laid all your private abilities to run for less than this other players are going to run for with very little cost to him. Pays it out and is connecting to his destination. He decides to put it in the um, map. The Cotton is one of those companies where I think it's very tempting to hold that on your charter because that third token um, could be quite consequential. However, Fort Worth is a decent enough uh, location, one of those P cities, and it does give you access to the offboards later in the game. So he's basically just secured his late game route with that token, um, and he's also able to do uh, double Fort Worth um, with that. So reasonable to do that. But it is painful to have a company with only two or three tokens. Running two of his trains. Um, unfortunately, because of the destination mechanic, he's not able to run all three trains just yet, but we'll probably be seeing him do that in the future. Um, and he pays out for 160 again. So double bonus for um, John, or double payout for John, and that's going to give him a bunch of cash into the next stock round. He also is the player that has been able to redeem a bunch of his shares, so his company is getting a lot of that money as well. Pretty good situation. ATSF getting a little bit of a reprieve here in terms of access to um, green trains without falling back. And he is going to secure the token in Kansas City. Uh, again, that probably should have been the SLSF's token, but given a gift by the ATSF. Running two trains out of this upgraded city and actually not running two trains, so he's just going to run, I think it's the same revenue either way. Um, so double tapping Topeka for 100, and he buys the four. All the two trains go away. Bad news for the KD, bad news for, well, basically just the KD. KD running two three trains and is upgrading Springfield. Really should have secured that token. Doesn't have the money for it now, and as a result, runs the risk of losing out on that to the ATSF. Um, ATSF does have the cash for it, so we'll see if that happens. Running his three train, one of them is just a two train, running for 150, and pays it out. Fort Worth um, has a bunch of track courtesy of the Cotton, um, another company with just two tokens. He uh, doesn't have track lead to his destination, but does have pretty good runs. Is he gonna snag a quick token in Little Rock? Uh, just upgrading Fort Worth for now, and buys a four, and we're into the second operating round. All right, SLSF is up, and I'll be curious to see where he's heading. He may just be heading down south to his destination. Going to take him a little bit of time to get there. Looks like he's going to upgrade and secure the token in Little Rock. Interesting. I don't when I see when I play this game, I don't see Little Rock prioritized like this. Um, it just seems very easily bypassed. Uh, yeah. All right. He's running his three trains and running for 230 now. Pretty nice revenue. Cotton probably is going to have a pretty a revenue kind of close to that, um, running similar trains for similar routes. He doesn't get all the bonuses that the um, SLSF player did, um, but he will be getting his destination bonus, at least uh, on one of the trains. So running for 230, actually I think exactly the same as the SLSF. Good news for him. And he also pays that out. ATSF, single four train, his revenue is going to be a little bit lackluster. We'll see if he secures that Springfield token or not. 
upgrading his home and going to pass tokening for now, running for 130, so falling a little bit behind in revenue. Katie, 2-3 train should have good revenue. Looks like he's going to start working down south to the um, destination for both himself and ATSF. Surprised that we don't see the ATSF um, laying that track as well. But regardless, um, Katie is running 2-3 trains as well and running them for 190. Fort Worth, last company to operate, first um, run for this company. Does he just head up towards Denver? Looks like he's preparing to do so or potentially just link up with Kansas City and Topeka. Um, We'll be tokened out there until Brown, but potentially we'll snag a token there later in the game. Kansas City, always an attractive token spot. Running for just 80, half paying to stay um, yellow. And yellow companies, or yellow strategy in this game is um, oftentimes very powerful. So may just see him kind of half pay, loiter in the um, yellow zone for the late game. Looking at the game state for a moment, um, in terms of shares, Henry is far and away in the lead, um, running the Katy and the Fort Worth. He has quite a bit of train liability in both of his companies, um, not a whole lot of capital, so that's another reason for him to be half withholding or half paying, but um, is in a pretty good position. Katy with decent map position, Fort Worth um, with a lot of track already laid for it, pretty, pretty easy for him to reach his destination and has a train capable of making that run. George, um, he has the least shares, but interestingly has the highest net worth. Um, and I think that's largely a function of his uh, private buy-ins in the last operating round. We'll see if he's interested in floating a new company here. Probably should be. Um, may also want to redeem some shares into the SLSF, but probably wants to wait for that company to be sold down a little bit, which I assume we're going to be seeing from the other players, given that there's $60 of arbitrage from the IPO to the market. So don't have to rush to redeem those shares just yet. Can just wait for that. Um, Frank, ATSF, is um, in a little bit of a weak position in terms of revenue. Um, doesn't have the highest uh, treasury either, but has those three treasury shares that it can fall back on. Um, not going to be seeing him float a company, just needs to pick up cheap paying shares. So maybe looking towards that Fort Worth yellow share, um, because I assume we'll be seeing John, who's the only player operating ahead of him, floating another company. He, uh, Speaking of John, he was uh, the cotton player. I'm sure he would have liked to have had the Fort Worth company, which was snagged in the last stock round, but we'll see what he wants to float now. Um, a lot of good companies are available, especially for a cotton uh, presidency who can lay track along that eastern side of the map um, to synergize with them. Because So could see the ICK, um, could also see the MP. Um, I would be a little bit more surprised by something like the Southern Pacific or the Texas Pacific. Um, but that said, the Texas Pacific, starting right next to Fort Worth, um, does have this token spot immediately available to it to take advantage of this track. Um, so maybe something uh, to think about there, but... I would, if I was a betting man, I would say either the MP or the Ick. Let's see. Instead, going to buy the um, MKT share and buying it from the IPO. So just getting a little bit of extra cash IPO to market. Expect we'll see that share sold and him floating a company. But again, um, sacrificing priority or your right of first action for a random share as opposed to securing a presidency, a little bit of an interesting decision. So he does take the opportunity to just trash a share. Trashing shares in um, 1870 in particular is questionable. So you're just giving the other players the ability to, you know, price protect these shares and exceed their cert limit. Um, John did this to Henry's company, so it will potentially give John um, another action right in a row. So this gives him a few extra bucks. I haven't looked very carefully to see if he was at the threshold for an IPO um, transition. Maybe the extra $14 put him over to a higher IPO. That's possible. But looking at the numbers, it doesn't seem like that's the case. We see um, the MKT actually not price protected, which is interesting. It doesn't drop because it was already ledged. Um, but generally speaking, I like price protecting those shares. Um, it's a stock action that you're basically being gifted by another player. Um, so you can't, uh, turn your nose up at, uh, leaping ahead of priority as a result of that. That said, maybe he's expecting to have priority regardless because George has so much money. Um, Frank, he is up next and John may be upset here. He may have been anticipating that he was going to get, um, a second stock purchase, um, when Henry price protected, but no such luck for him. So we're on to Frank. 
Frank is buying the SLSF, and I expect he's going to be selling these shares down. He's probably just looking for that $60 of arbitrage. George, he is also buying the SLSF, so not eager to float. And I'm surprised we haven't seen a company floated yet. Um, I imagine that we'll be seeing at least one, probably two, but it looks like players have other priorities for right now. Henry, he um, also buys the last SLSF, and I expect we're gonna be seeing these shares sold. The revenue is quite good, um, but there are probably more important ways to gain map control by just floating a new company. So John goes go back, just does go back for the ick. Um, that was one of those companies we had highlighted, and um, he pars it super low. So probably going to be trying to yellow this company um, just to exceed his cert limit. But he's got a while to catch up with Henry in terms of um, shares. Henry probably has two shares left that he can buy, and he already is four shares ahead. So um, pretty good position. Frank, he's buying the Fort Worth off the market. Henry probably was looking at that share, hoping to get it, but no such luck. Frank, now out of cash for um, shares. George, he is parring the GMO. Um, I don't believe he has the cash to actually float that. Um, actually, I think he does. Okay. So two low pars, um, and probably will not be seeing the fives broken in this operating round as a result. Henry, going back for an ATSF. That company is now floating up. John. Continue to float the ick. Frank passing George, GMO. Henry, last share for him, and he buys his own MKT off the market. May want to redeem one of those shares with the um, MKT treasury. We'll see. Looks like John and George are just continuing to float. Actually, George takes a detour and buys a Katie. He buys it from the IPO, just attacking that company and immediately sells it because Henry doesn't have the cash to price protect. Not that he was price protecting earlier in the stock round when he had the opportunity to anyways, so I don't know that that's really um, consequential. He does redeem a share into the Katie. I think that's generally the right idea. John continuing to float, and George just going back to his GMO. So a brief detour for the Katie, and it looks like probably Henry's gonna be leaving with priority now. John um, has floated the ick, but sells one of his shares just for um, liquidity to buy paying shares in another company. And GMO nearly floated. John goes back and buys the Fort Worth. Not the most important um, revenue-wise, but really available shares are limited. And I'll go back to my earlier statement. The reason why this is, is because of all these redeemed shares. So we got five shares redeemed already. Um, we have, what is it, seven companies floated, but five of those 70 shares are unavailable. And uh, they are in potentially attractive companies like the Cotton, which is running for 230. Um, John's not upset by that though, because he already has those shares. So he wouldn't be buying those anyways, but just highlighting that point. George, he is now floated on the GMO, and we'll see if he wants to sell down on the GMO to buy paying shares again, just like John did. Um, in terms of operating order, I don't know that the operating order between these two companies is particularly significant at this stage in the game. So George, although he's operating ahead of the ick, doesn't really, I think, have to be afraid of selling a share to operate behind him, which is what he does. And Henry's passing, John passing, George, he buys a Fort Worth share, and both these players have cash for one more share, but John has already passed once, so I think if you're George, you have to assume he's passing again, which he does, and George takes the opportunity to buy one more paying share. He buys that market share from the ick that was sold down before. We are into the um, next operating round, and I believe there are two four trains, three four trains, um, which is why I was saying the relative operating order of the ick and the GMO didn't seem that important. Um, they don't really have the ability to buy the four and the five, so we may see a stall in the fours here. SLSF has a lot of the track, but probably is gonna be starting to head down south. Um, George does have the GMO, so with these two companies or two presidencies, he's gonna be able to pretty rapidly get to his destination on the SLSF and get a bonus run there, which is pretty important for him. Heading down south, actually heading towards the dit, which is surprising. Um, would have thought with a three train he'd be trying to bypass that. Um, this does not give him the um, destination run with just a three train. He has to get from Springfield to um, southeast. So would have would have expected to see a gentle here and um, a bypass of that dit to get into his destination, but it doesn't look like that's going to be the case. He is running for. 
um, 2.30, and he's closed the port. Um, I suppose he doesn't want to give all the other players uh, the benefit of running into that port city, particularly the Cotton player. Cotton, he lays a sharp turn. Unclear to me where he's heading with that sharp turn out of Memphis. Um, would have thought that he'd be laying friendly track for the Ick, um, but maybe he's looking to upgrade this track here with the X to get the Ick up north. Um, so maybe he's upset by the SLSF laying these two straights because he was hoping to get down into the Ick. Um, not a long-term problem for him, but it will delay him a little bit because each of those green upgrades costs you a full operating round as opposed to being able to lay two yellow tracks um, if they were not first to upgrade. So that will slow him down. Running for 210 and pays that out. ATSF, he is heading over to Wichita. Not sure what that's about. Uh, surprised he's not just heading down to Fort Worth. Uh, KD and ATSF both want that Fort Worth token. Um, not the end of the world. If you get tokened out there, it is possible to bypass it, of course, in Dallas or around the west side of the map, but it will slow you down on your destination. Running for just 120, pays it out. KD, he is heading down towards Fort Worth, and I think the thing he needs to be a little bit careful about here is opening up the ability for the ATSF to token in Fort Worth, as mentioned. So putting himself just one track away um, does rain the, raise the possibility that he will lose out on that token because the ATSF is going to be operating first. Um, he does control the Fort Worth track, so he's going to get another run or another opportunity to lay track, which may potentially um, give him room for shenanigans to block out the ATSF, but um, that is a concern or something he should be thinking about. Both of these companies with money for tokens. Running for 180, pays it out. We are on to the Ick, first operation of this company, and he is indeed looking to lay that X track um, to get up to his destination in short order. Um, SLSF, if he wanted to, could be nasty and lay some tragic track here um, to prevent that, but I don't know if it's really worth it. Um, he's probably looking to head towards his destination and delaying the cotton or delaying the Ick is just delaying himself. He buys a four and may have wanted to consider buying two fours there. Um, two fours, of course, is not a permanent train, um, but five trains are not permanent either. And you may see someone stall on a single four train while you're running um, two of them, which is going to give you great mid-game uh, revenue. Most of these players are going to end up with having to withhold or um, half pay a lot for permanent trains anyway. So if you can get some good revenue in the green phase, why not? GMO. He um, is synergizing with the SLSF, presumably, and yeah, not really sure. I guess he's going to the Jackson tile on the Yick home tile, and I'm going to be looking to cooperate with that company to get north, which is reasonable. But again, um, I was expecting him to cooperate with the SLSF a little bit more. GMO buys a single four, and we are sitting on the poison four. Fort Worth, he does link up with Oklahoma and really needs to token there if he wants to preserve the um, token on Fort Worth. And actually, having said that, that doesn't actually accomplish his goal. So regardless, he has um, basically lost out on the token on Fort Worth with the KD, unless uh, the ATSF decides to give it to him. Running for 80, or running for 100 with the four train, which he um, half pays, so staying yellow. SLSF is up and should be able to hit his destination, but it does not have the train um, to take advantage of it. So he does lay the track, but we'll need at least a four train to make that run. Running for 230, pays it out, and he buys the four train across. Okay, that's clever. I didn't expect that to happen. Um, does that mean that the GMO is falling back trainless? It does, so that's a downside. Um, but he does get the run or the extra run, I should say, out of the SLSF, and he's going to be able to run, I believe, all of his trains. Um, so that'll be pretty good revenue. He has 60% of that company. Um, does have the downside of the GMO falling back, but um, that was a clever play that I, I didn't anticipate. Um, okay. So he's running for 320, very nice revenue. Unfortunately, none of that's going to the company. Um, it does put him in good place in the next stock round in terms of his uh, liquidity, but his company is going to be struggling. 
could in theory dump the SLSF, but it has such great map presence, um, being one of the early companies with good tokens, that seems like a, a pretty big mistake. So I don't think we'll see that. And uh, if we were going to see that, I assume he would have left less cash in the company. So I think these other players should feel pretty secure. He's also going last in priority, so really not a concern. Cotton. He is laying the X-Track, and I expect we'll see the Ick um, upgrade the straight sharp turn and start heading north through there. So he's running for 210, pays it out, ATSF. He is laying through Fort Worth towards his destination, and I assume we're going to be seeing the token in Fort Worth, which we do. Okay. So kind of sloppy from Henry, I would say, giving away that token. He had um, twice the track points that Frank had in this area of the map, and uh, still was unable to end up with the token in the KD. It's the second time, I think, that we've seen um, the KD pass up on fairly important tokens. You know, the KD with the token in Springfield, the token in Fort Worth, that is a pretty good KD for the late game. He's going to be able to run, you know, from map edge to map edge. Runs for just 120. I think that's the major liability for the ATSF right now is that his revenue is just, you know, so lackluster compared to the other players. KD, he is upgrading Oklahoma, probably just getting a little extra cash to his run, running a three train still. And running for 180, pays it out. Fort Worth, he is heading up towards his destination, will be hitting it next uh, operating round, and has the train of sufficient length to get there. Looks like um, Katie is going to fire back a little bit with a double token in Oklahoma City, but really, um, that is definitely bypassable. So that's a pretty short-term play. But he does secure the token for now. And he's going to half pay, still staying green. So I think his, uh, sorry, yellow. So I think his strategy is just to stay yellow for as long as possible. Ick is going to be upgrading H19, um, it looks like. And actually linking up with the GMO first. So I guess that gives him an extra revenue center for his run. But is that worth it? 20 extra bucks for your revenue uh, on a company that you may be half paying on already, as opposed to making progress towards your destination? I don't know. And GMO was going to be laying that track no matter what you laid. Uh, hard to say. Half pan buys that last four. Um, again, could have seen that earlier and had better revenue, but um, elected to just defer for now. GMO, trainless, not going to be um, running trains. And upgrades Jackson. Does he secure that token? He does. He is going to be shuffling a train out of the SLSF. And... Gives SLSF $31. Um, so that leaves about $300 in each company. Easily within a withhold for a five train if he uh, elects to go that route. Stock round seven, um, because of the slow start, we are in pretty high stock rounds, but um, not really very far along the train roster. This may end up being a pretty long game. Alternatively, all these players have a ton of cash, so we may just see a snap float of three new companies at high pars and these trains just fly out the shelves. Um, which would put a lot of players under the gun for when these six trains come out. Um, Cotton, KD, and GMO, both with single three trains, all of them operating, well, I should say the MKT and the GMO operating fairly late in priority. Um, Cotton probably safe from falling back train list based on its market value of 200, which is pretty, pretty strong. Henry taking the TP, and John... He is parring the M MP, so he has the Cotton, the Ick, and the MP. Um, all those companies are going to be kind of synergistic in terms of track that they want. Unfortunately, with tokens, um, any company that's parred this late is going to struggle a little bit to develop routes, um, but at least the track will be there. Frank, he is selling out of the SLSF. Um, May see George price protect. Um, if Frank is selling the share to float the SP, it may well make sense for George to price protect this share um, and just uh, redeem it later on to get a um, high value share into his company. It is very expensive though, and he needs the company cash. So while he may want to price protect that, um, needs to be a little bit careful. There may be better value shares available. Um, that said, there's not that many shares um, that are going to be paying out like the SLSF will. Yeah, it's a hard decision. We'll see what he decides.
Frank. He is indeed parring the last company. He pars it at 82. So all the companies have been floated now, or parred at least. And George, is he going to price protect? He does. Okay. And looking at share density for a second, I think he was ahead in share density earlier, um, but has actually fallen behind Henry, it looks like. I don't remember um, if that's correct. It's been a couple of operating rounds since we talked about that. Henry, he is continuing to float his company, John, floating the MP. And I think something that these players need to be a little bit worried about or just cognizant of is if they put all their cash into these new newly floated companies, that leaves George with a golden opportunity to sell shares, trash their value, um, and prevents them from price protecting. So always want to have a little bit of extra liquidity in this game um, for the price protect if it becomes an option. And just looking at the yellow companies, looks like George, John, and Henry all have a yellow company, leaving Frank um, out in the cold, so to speak in terms of um, share density opportunities. Frank is also far and away behind in shares, so maybe um, looking at a last place finish for this player. Um, plenty of life left in this game, but not off to a great start. Um, the other players have at least five uh, yellow shares each. Frank, he is buying the SP, um, so just continue to float his company. George, does he go and dumpster dive for these yellow shares? He is, uh, in fact, doing that. He's buying from the IPO to protect um, the yellow market share, which actually doesn't make sense at all um, because the IPO is paying in and it's more expensive. So surprised to see that. May just be looking to redeem that share into the company that's in the market. We'll see if that's his strategy. If that's the case, may, have, may should have um, considered doing that earlier. TP, working on being floated. MP, same thing. SP, same thing. George, he buys the KD um, from the IPO, so some nice arbitrage there. And is he just going to leave that GMO share in the market? I would have assumed he would have redeemed that or um, purchased it himself. If, if, if for any reason, just to deny it to the other players. MP almost floated, and SP almost floated. 10% for all these companies left. George, he does indeed redeem that share. Okay. So was playing it to the last second, because I'm sure that share would have been bought soon, but he's able to secure it. Good. Henry floats the TP and sells a share. Now, I think operating order does become relevant here. Um, so TP is going to fall back and operate behind the SP, but we've been seeing all the players take this opportunity or take this strategy. So this doesn't necessarily um, represent the final word in terms of operating order. And the reason why operating order may matter is because if you um, don't have to buy the first don't have to buy the first five train. Um, it doesn't mean you're going to lose out on the five trains. There's not enough capital for them to just evaporate. Um, but it does mean that you'll have opportunity to brown child and potentially um, a token or um, higher revenue as a result. So it may be um, a little bit important to operate later here. In terms of competing for track, the TP and the SP are similar position on the map. Um, but that said, I don't know that they're competing for any tokens right now just because the Fort Worth tokens are all taken. So I don't think operating order, operating order is important from that perspective. Henry um, sells a TP and can't price protect. Okay. Looks like George was redeeming a share. Just looking back, I lost track of where we were. So now the MP has floated. And it looks like so far everybody's selling one share in their company, which John goes back and does as well. The SP is floated and sells. Leaving George to pick up the TP that was sold before. And we'll see if these other players want to go back and buy paying shares or what they're trying to do. Henry is buying the Fort Worth. Um, so just focusing on yellow shares. John. He buys the Fort Worth as well, so everybody recognizing the value of these yellow companies. Um, this company's now sold out, so he's not going to be able to just half pay to loiter in the yellow zone. He's going to have to actually full withhold um, at least once to move back. John out of cash. Frank, he is also similarly uh, valuing the yellow companies. The ick with two four trains looks attractive, but it really doesn't have track developed for these four trains. So its revenue is going to be poor, um, at least for now. And also buying these yellow shares, you have to assume that the presidents are going to be withholding for the near term. So uh, this is an investment for the future. You can't expect there to be much revenue um, in the next operating round from these shares. George, 
he goes back and buys an MP. So he's just buying the shares that have been sold by these other players. Um, they won't pay out for at least one round, but they're safe investments and highly likely to pay out um, in the later operating rounds. This does unfortunately lose some priority probably, unless Frank goes back and buys another share, but his decision is um, you know, priority or a share. So he may wanna just um, take priority and sit on the $75. John's passing, Frank. He does buy an MP. Um, he actually buys it from the IPO as well, so not even getting the cheap share. And this loses him priority, gives it to George, who I assume is passing. And we should be seeing everybody pass. So a little bit of gift for George there. Um, let's just return and look at the game state for a second. George is our net worth leader. Um, he is narrowly behind in shares compared to Henry. Um, has decent map position on the Frisco, but uh, the GMO is going to struggle, at least for the near term. Henry, um, share leader, um, second place in net worth, has great map position on the KD and the Fort Worth, where he's locked down the east coast or the, sorry, the west coast of the map, at least for the near term, um, with tokens I believe was in Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. Yep, that will be bypassed later in the game, but for now he's uh, locked that down, and he is a three uh, president player. So it's going to have a little bit of an advantage in terms of share density, and we see that in reflected in him exceeding his cert limit already. John, uh, Cotton, and Ick, um, some decent synergy there. Similar strategy that uh, George is running with the SLSF and the GMO, but John has the advantage of a third presidency in the MP. The MP is probably going to struggle to develop a route for itself just because it's floated so late and... There are tokens in Memphis and um, Kansas City already. Does have an opportunity to get into Springfield potentially, but boy, there's a lot of expensive track in the way. So gonna have a little bit of a struggle for himself, but can look towards the South um, in the Ick and the GMO to start developing some track for him. And then that rounds us out with Frank. Frank is running the ATSF and the SP. He is far and away behind in shares and net worth. Um, the ATSF does not have cash for better trains, and um, although it has good tokens, um, has had its run cut, so it's not going to be taking advantage of its destination run. Um, the SP, uh, kind of isolated in the um, southwest of the map, does have to make its way all the way across the map, pretty much all on its own, probably not going to be getting much help from the other players. So, um, not the greatest position, probably will be in last place. SLSF is up and running a three and a four train. We'll see what track he has in store. Looks like he's actually passing track. That's interesting. Um, I believe he is trying to help his other company get north. I think he does not have a valid way of upgrading this track. So he's just going to pass for now. Probably should be looking, you know, even if he can't help his other company to upgrade some of the yellow track to prevent other companies from bypassing his tokens. Um, it's rare that I think it's a good idea to just pass your track. There's almost always something that you could be doing to hurt another player. Um, so I don't agree with that decision. Running for 260, and he pays that out. I think the SLSF and the SSW or Cotton should basically just be paying out um, as much as possible. They want to run to the right, really jack up their share prices um, for their presidencies. Cotton. Um, he's laying track up the West Coast, and just looking at his other companies, um, not entirely sure why that is. Maybe just hoping to prevent the ATSF from bypassing a blockade in Oklahoma City by just spamming yellow track um, down, but it's not going to help uh, his other companies, really. Running for 210, which he pays, ATSF. As noted, blocked at Oklahoma City starts needs to start laying some green track um, to bypass Oklahoma City and is instead laying track um, down south into the southwest, but will not be able to make his destination run. Runs for 120 and pays that out. KD with two three trains. He is actually interested in bypassing Fort Worth, so um, he is doing what I thought the ATSF player would be doing. Um, he does have the Texas Pacific, so he's going to have a bunch of track points um, to help bypass Fort Worth. That's pretty good um, 
synergy for him. He has the TP, the Fort Worth, and the KD all motivated to um, bypass uh, Fort Worth and the blockade of tokens there. Running a three train, um, unfortunately for him, he doesn't have um, good enough trains to make his destination run. So even though he's going to be able to bypass that blockade, it's going to be a while for him to actually do anything with it. Dallas um, laying towards New Orleans and is going to beat um, the SP there. SP is going to have to piggyback on this track that's being laid, but with clever upgrades can probably be delayed um, until Brown. TP looks like he's going to end up with the first five actually shuffling trains, um, and that's going to give the five train to the MKT um, for his destination run. SP, first operation for him. Expect he'll be heading towards uh, New Orleans with a green upgrade here, but let's see. Instead, looks like he is also interested in um, bypassing Fort Worth, and more importantly, getting into Dallas so that he can... Um, piggyback off this track into New Orleans. Um, I think it's a safe bet to uh, think that Dallas can be upgraded friendly, um, and particularly now that we have access, or will shortly have access to Brown track, um, pretty safe bet that he'll be able to get access there. The only thing that he needs to worry about is a token, um, and realistically speaking, I don't think there's many tokens left in the game from the companies with access to this uh, tile, so it should be pretty safe there. Buys the first five, we are into Brown and the MP is up. This company, as we said, is going to struggle a little bit. We'll see where he wants to head. It looks like he's just going to secure a run for himself into Chicago for now, and maybe let the other companies help him out with Trek. Buys a five, Fort Worth. He is linking up with his um, destination and should be able to reach it, and also has the train of sufficient length. So we'll see a destination run there. Um, he full withholds. Uh, we saw that coming because he wanted to stay yellow. So plenty of um, company money and about to have a destination run in addition to this. He places the token on the map. Um, with how this map is developing, it may have made sense to hold on to that and drop that into Topeka um, or potentially try and get it down into Springfield. Um, but he's going to just double Denver for now. Uh, these off-board um, destinations are obviously much less powerful than tokens somewhere on the map. Um, so a little bit of a decision to be made there, but he, he does elect to take the bonus. He's going to run his two trains for 280, and he withholds again. So he has a ton of cash in that company, and just looking at John's position for a moment, um, a little bit behind in shares, but has um, pretty good company money. Sorry, I think we're looking at the wrong player. So the Fort Worth is the player that we were looking at. Um, and he is actually leading in shares and really wants to keep that company yellow so he can continue to exceed his cert limit. Um, so he's in good shape. He's got um, near permanent train money in two of his companies, decent routes, um, maybe seeing him starting to run away with the game. Back to John. Um, he has the ick, and I expect we'll be seeing H19 upgraded. Was expecting that earlier, but didn't quite see it. And interestingly, is laying the gentle curve, not the straight. Um, so prioritizing. Uh, avoiding dits and gonna have to gonna have to take the trade off and pay the terrain cost as a result runs for just 110 and actually half pays all these players interested in staying yellow gmo does he lay the track for the um ick player they're both motivated to head north he might um decide he has to lay the track looks like he does um if the ick player lays the other 60 i guess it's a fair trade so they're both motivated looks like they're gonna play friendly Runs for just 80, pays it out. Interesting that he's paying that out. Does that take him out of yellow? Um, not quite. So I guess he figured he had one payout available to him uh, before he had to start withholding to stay yellow. He may have wanted to withhold the first time and then hope for a higher revenue in the second one when he pays out. Um, but it looks like he's just going to take the opportunity, opportunity for the money as he has it. SLSF, now access to brown tiles. And he's going to immediately upgrade Memphis. He's running two trains out of there, so it makes sense. Running for 290, still pretty good revenue. Um, Cotton, he is upgrading Little Rock. Um, so we'll get the advantage of the brown upgrade from the SLSF and then a second brown upgrade. He is running for 250. ATSF, is he going to complete that um, bypass um, through Dallas? I don't see why he would. I don't know what he's going to do. Maybe he's going to continue to run through the um, west side of the map. 
So instead of upgrading Kansas City and running for just 150, he pays that out. Katie, um, I think this is the player that we're going to see upgrade Dallas. And unfortunately, still does not have the cash for his destination run. Um, and has a little bit of a liability in the sense that he um, needs to figure out a way to maintain access to the southwest. Alternatively, I suppose he could just sacrifice his destination run and take the um, token on his charter to mess with other people's runs. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we'll see that, but it wouldn't be unreasonable to think about it. Does upgrade Dallas. Does he immediately token there? He does. Okay. So both the ATSF and the KD have, um, you know, secured routes into their destination. Um, actually, I take that back. The ATSF is still tokened out at Oklahoma City, so he's got some work to do. But neither of them have um, trains for it right now. KD should be picking up a five train here, and he does for his destination run. And he's going to run for 320, a little extra money for him. Texas Pacific probably still working the lonesome way down to New Orleans. And uh, one thing I'll point out is that the SP has to be pretty annoyed at this Dallas token. Um, just because now he's unable to get into this all this yellow track that's been laid. So TP actually is upgrading Oklahoma City. Not in any rush to make it over to New Orleans. A little bit surprised by that. Um, and he runs for 100, which he pays out. SP. He is laying a track into Austin. Really not sure where he's heading through that. But he's in kind of rough position in terms of long-term track development. Runs his five for just 80, pretty poor. Pays it out. MP, he is upgrading his home. And I assume he's doing that to open up a token spot for one of his other companies, which looks like it's the Ick. So the Ick has plenty of cash and a token available. Um, I think I was looking at the wrong company. Yes, he still does here. So I expect we'll be seeing that in his very next operation. Withholds to stay yellow. And the ick should be laying into St. Louis and secures the token. So GMO um, loses out the token on St. Louis, which I believe opens up to three holes. Um, St. Louis is a special tile. I believe it actually does not. So Kansas City upgrades the three, but St. Louis does not. So bad news for GMO, but GMO has achieved his um, late team goal of getting a destination run, so can't be too upset. And it looks like the Ick did lay that other $60 track, um, so the GMO and the Ick basically split costs. How friendly. GMO getting his destination run, and he um, lays the token on the map to double St. Louis. Good revenue center to have a token. Um, and I was forgetting, of course, that even though it doesn't open up to two holes, he was able to secure a token there as a result of the destination. So well played to him. We'll have a pretty good run throughout the game now. He is withholding to stay yellow. And he is now operating, upgrading St. Louis. And is running for 150, but still half paying. Fort Worth, last company in this set of operating rounds and may see him heading actually i'm not sure um ton of cash in this company as a result of staying yellow and all these withholds and half pays um he already has his destination run has the train for it and this is henry so henry's other company is the kd and the tp they have all the track they want heading down south yeah he he's kind of achieved a lot of his track goals not really sure where we'll see him head Looks like he's upgrading Fort Worth just for the revenue. Pays for 200 and half pays to stay yellow. Look at how much money he has. That's a um, pretty good position for him. Looking at the player positions, um, George, he has second most shares and is leading in net worth. But let's not forget that Henry has been kind of accumulating a ton of cash in the Fort Worth. So this may be a little bit misleading. Um, George has the SLFF and GMO and T just the SLSF and GMO, both these companies with decent track, um, but does have some train liability, which is going to be quickly become relevant, I think. Henry, um, probably the true leader of this game, um, not the highest net worth, but most shares, plenty of room to grow into shares, um, especially with yellow GMO shares available, and has great map position for all three of his companies, basically. John, um, Cotton and Mopac and Ick, um, decent map position for his companies, decent routes, um, but has fallen a little bit behind in net worth and looks like he has a little bit less company cash, so maybe in some trouble 
when these more expensive permanent trains um, start coming out. And then finally, Frank bringing out the Breer. Um, I think he's just kind of dead in the water at this point. All right, so into the stock round. Um, George is leading us off and buying the SP. SP with two trains um, doesn't have good routes, so a little bit surprised to see him buying this company um, and actually taking a, well, I guess he bought it from the market, so at least he's not taking the hit to do it. But with these um, yellow shares available in the MP, have to imagine, in the GMO even, um, have to imagine that that's uh, a priority. Henry, he does turn around and buy that uh, MP double, uh, yellow share. Makes sense. John, he is similarly seeing the value of these um, yellow shares. And we'll see if Frank picks up the last one. He does. So George um, missed out on the yellow shares, cannot buy any GMO shares, and um, now the rest of the yellow shares are sold out. So pretty big mistake, in my opinion, to buy this SP share, which has no track, and... Um, lose out on yellow shares as a result. George, he is passing. Um, that's interesting. So not at a cert limit. Are there really no shares that are safe to buy? Um, no. Um, so he could easily buy a TP share. Um, he's operating ahead of, or he has priority on Henry, so very unlikely that that's a dump risk. And uh, Really should be picking up IPO shares to deny them to the company and also just meet a cert limit. So passing here, probably a mistake. Henry, he buys a GMO. Um, unlike George, he has yellow shares available to him. So he's going to continue to just um, extend his share lead, especially since George is passing inexplicably. John, he buys the GMO as well. And it looks like there's just a rush on these yellow shares. So no yellow shares available. And we'll just see players continuing to um, hit their cert limits. George. He is continuing to pass Henry. He is going back for paying shares. Makes sense. John, also looking at the Ick. The Ick with two four trains is attractive and has um, built some routes for himself now with access to uh, St. Louis, so it should be increasing his revenue. Frank, he is going back for the Texas Pacific. George, for some reason, George is just auto-passing, it looks like, and really hard for me to understand why. Um, in theory, there's some exposure to buying two shares in a company, but... You know, particularly the TP, as noted, he has priority on Henry, so it should be pretty safe for him to buy. Henry um, doesn't have the same um, compunction and is buying paying shares. John buying the SOPAC. And Frank, he's passing, doesn't really have cash for shares. Um, Henry probably just picks up a last share here. He buys the SP. Okay. And John is passing, so he's going to elect to take priority rather rather than um, two paying shares, it looks like. All right, into the operating round, operating round eight. And just looking at the bank, we have $7,000 left, but there's going to be a pretty brutal train rush here. So a bunch of cash is going to be injected into the um, bank, and this game has plenty of life left in it. SLSF. Um, looks like he is interested in potentially run to the north um, through Memphis but really not the most exciting track. And running for 350, which he full pays. I have to imagine that these players are getting pretty close to the end of the stock market. Yeah, they are. Um, so they really need to <laughs> start pushing this game along because all that um, net worth that they have tied up in those shares is going to start stagnating with no share appreciation. Cotton, upgrading Jackson, running just the three train for 180, pays it out. Santa Fe, um, somehow trainless. Must have been some train, sh train shuffling there. Um, and I imagine he's going to be force buying a train to kick off the train rush. So probably buying a six here. Who? So Cotton bought the last five. Okay. So we will see the three trains rusting here. Is anybody going to be falling back trainless? Um, GMO will. And Texas Pacific will. Okay. ATSF is working on the bypass of Oklahoma City. Surprised we didn't see this earlier. Um, this is blockable, but um, eventually he should be able to get some kind of route along um, either this tile or this tile to get access into um, Fort Worth and complete his destination run. Buys the six, and this removes the tokens, so SLSF's runs will be a little bit worse. Onto the Katy. He's upgrading Kansas City. This does open up a token for someone who happens to be operating 
um, with availability for it, that Kansas City token can be pretty consequential. Um, and he, uh, of note, is not prioritizing blocking the ATSF with this upgrade. So gets himself a few extra bucks, but uh, potentially is giving the ATSF an easy workaround of Oklahoma City. Runs for 220 and pays it. TP also trainless. And he is laying track towards New Orleans, so took a little break in the last operating round, but is heading back towards that now. And will similarly have to emergency buy a train, it looks like. Okay. So probably a little bit of a shakeup in the net worth with two emergency buys here. SP is laying track into Dallas, but unfortunately for him, um, that is not getting him anywhere near her, his destination. Probably needs to start looking towards upgrading this track into Houston and then um, cozying on up to this yellow track into his destination because there's no way he's going to get past this uh, blockade the other players have set up. Running two trains here, and we'll be double tapping the Southwest offboard, but boy, uh, pretty poor revenue for a four and a five train. 160, which he full withholds. The Ick, he is linking up into Chicago, which will give him his destination route. And also heading over to Kansas City, he needs to be a little bit careful in the sense that he has now put that city two track lays away from St. Louis. So the GMO or the MP, um, looking particularly at the MP, may be looking at um, that token in Kansas City with, uh, with Avarice. Um, that said, it is the MP that is his company, so he probably would be happy to end up with the token there. Runs for 230 and should be getting his destination run. He takes the off-board um, uh, token and will be doubling his run as a result. Running for 270 and GMO's up, also trainless. So as um, predicted, we're seeing a little bit of a train rush here. Um, looks like they upgrade St. Louis, but un unfortunately unable to run through it as it's trainless and buys the last six, I believe. So we are on to the eights, and what do you know? The Fort Worth um, has the cash for it, and also is the first company with the opportunity to buy an eight. So may see the fours rusting in the first operating round here, which is going to put a little bit of pressure on the SLSF. SLSF has a reasonable amount of money to um, put towards its next train, but it will be going into the presidency um, for at least some of it. Does cause him to fall back, but he's run so far right, um, he's going to hit the edge of the stock market no matter what he does, so I don't know if he's too worried about that. Um, Ick will also be falling back trainless, and that's a much bigger problem for John um, because he has much less cash and much less um, personal cash as well. Everybody else will have trains to survive this, um, but we'll see if they continue to push chains or if they're going to stall on the eights. I suspect they will. It's going to take some heavy withholding or an intentional um, force purchase to break into the 10s, it looks like. This may be a game where we don't see the 12s come out, which, who would that benefit? Um, MP and Cotton have a 5, so John is probably happy if the 5s are permanent. And Frank also would be on the hook for a permanent train of that 5 rusted, so he may be okay with it as well. That said, um, these players need to... Make sure that they're not letting the other players run better trains for them too long, because even if their five trains don't rust, they may just fall behind on revenue if they're running a five train compared to other players, um, 10 trains and eight trains. That's a trap I've fallen into in 1870 uh, many times. Regardless, Fort Worth is up, and he is upgrading to Pika just for a few extra bucks, and runs, he full withholds, has even more cash in the company, and I imagine he buys a f uh, an eight, does he shuffle trains to try and push further? He does not, okay? MP um, should be securing that token in Kansas City and has just enough cash for it. What do you know? Does secure the token. Um, MP has decent runs now um, and only has a five train, but um, really probably only has the route for a five train for right now, so that's okay. He is going to um, have a little bit of trouble getting to Dallas, but he's another player that's motivated along with the uh, Santa Fe to bypass Oklahoma City. So that's good news for um, the Santa Fe player, um, who is Frank, and that he has a little bit of extra track points to compete against, uh, I believe it's Henry, um, for this bypass. Runs for 220 and full withholds to stay yellow. The Santa Fe is going to be force buying an 8, I assume. Looks like he is not running any track. No, he does upgrade Mobile. Um, okay. Okay. 
And that's interesting. How did he have access to upgrade that tile with the SLSF? Oh, it's because of his token on the offboard. Okay. So upgrades that and buys the eight. I believe there's one eight left. Yes. So is anybody in position to push through the tens? Not really. I don't imagine anybody wants to sell shares to bring out a train. I suppose that Henry, by shuffling trains, could um, get the cash to do it, but he's going to lose out on a run in the Fort Worth, which may not be the end of the world for him because he's already yellow and probably wants to stay yellow. So that may be the way we see the 10s come out, is the KD or um, the Texas Pacific buys the Fort Worth's 8 train and then he emergency buys it. He's already at his cert limit, so he doesn't care all that much about his personal cash at this point. Cotton's up, and looks like he is coordinating to create this bypass for Oklahoma City, and he is doing that for the MP. Um, but the Santa Fe is also a beneficiary of that. Runs for 270, pays it. Santa Fe should be getting his destination here and runs for 260, and both the Mopac and the Santa Fe um, destinate as a result of this. Santa Fe, um, does he want the token on the Southwest, or does he want to hold on to that into his charter and drop that somewhere to cut a route? Um, currently, the only place he could really drop it is Springfield, and I don't think anybody's running through there, so may just want to take uh, the doubling of Southwest. Southwest is only a $50 offboard, not one of the $60 offboards, or not the $60 offboard in Chicago. So a little bit less uh, exciting, but probably still worth taking that token. Places on the map and runs for just 260, which he pays. MP also is taking the bonus on the map, in this case in Dallas, and he's running for 230. We're on to the KD. KD. Um, laying the expensive track towards New Orleans, and I believe that's to help out the Texas Pacific here. So almost destinating on the Texas Pacific. And let's see if he buys that train out of the Fort Worth um, to push into the tens. So he pays out and does not shuffle trains. Okay. The Ick, he is interested in heading down into Mobile, and will buy that last eight. He does have to contribute a lot of cash out of his personal coffers, but doesn't have to sell shares. Texas Pacific, he is actually looking to bypass Austin, of all things, not reaching his destination. Doesn't have the cash to do it, so that makes sense. Um, running a six train, and he is paying that out for 190 Southern Pacific, um, upgrading Austin for a few extra bucks, and running for 140 He's withholding that, so... I guess anticipating that he's going to need to push trains to stay in this game. He's in last place, so he really needs to change up the um, game state in order to have a chance, but I think he's too far behind to really um, compete. Mopac, running a 5 train, upgrades Baton Rouge, and running for a 270, which it withholds to stay yellow. So I think with all these players withholding to stay yellow, we probably will see 12 trains come out, but we'll see. GMO, he is looking to bypass. Looks like he's setting up for a bypass of Jackson, and I suppose he's doing that for the SLSF. I don't know if that's worthwhile. The SLSF already has access to his offboard, and setting up a bypass for his company also sets up the bypass for all the other companies. So just kind of devaluing um, his token in the GMO. Runs for 260, withholds it, or actually half pays it. Fort Worth, last company to operate. And he is, I guess, looking to get into Topeka. Not entirely clear. Um, that does give him a little bit of a better destination run, perhaps. Especially with an A train. I guess he wants to hit as many revenue centers as he wants, as he can. Still not taking the full capacity of his A train. Running for 320, and he half pays it, so I think we'll be seeing him bring out a 10 train, just not in this operating round. Cotton, um, looks like I missed a train shuffle. So John is motivated to bring out the 10 trains, so we will see a little bit of pushing. And he's doing this with a purchase of his 5 train out of the MP. <clears throat> So he'll be emergency buying a 10 train here. Um, needs to be a little bit careful that both of these 5 trains don't rust on him. Then he'll 
regret um, pushing trains here, but I think he's feeling a little bit desperate um, in terms of just falling behind in shares and net worth compared to Henry. Henry has two permanent trains and really a good amount of cash in the Fort Worth already, so I think that we're getting to the point where we probably can call this for Henry, uh, but we'll give it a little bit more time. Cotton. Uh, completing this bypass around Jackson, it looks like. And he is actually having to sell shares to push trains like this. That seems like a mistake. Um, so buys the 10, doesn't rust anybody's trains, um, but does secure himself one of the better um, permanent trains. And he's actually even given the opportunity for price protection to Frank. Um, I don't know that the price protection is going to be that relevant since he's so far behind, but that is an interesting um, consequence of selling a share. Um, he does price protect it, and why wouldn't you? It's a extra share to pay out during this operating round. SLSF. He is, I guess, anticipating a possible token. I'm not entirely sure what the significance of that upgrade is. I guess just bypassing Kansas City now that he's been tokened out. Runs for 300 and pays it out. Santa Fe. He is starting to give the Southern Pacific an out through Austin, it looks like. Um... The Southern Pacific is his other company, so it makes sense that they would be cooperating. Runs for 310 and pays it out. Katie, single five train. He completes the link up into New Orleans, um, which is going to give his Texas Pacific its destination run. And he runs for 260, pays it out. Texas Pacific is going to take the token in New Orleans and run for just 130 for its destination run. Now the Texas Pacific's actual operation is up, I imagine we'll see an upgrade in New Orleans. Alternatively, could upgrade um, M18 and get a quick token in Mobile, which would be interesting. Not actually going to block anybody because they all have access um, through Memphis and um, into the other edge of Southwest or Southeast. But that would be interesting. Let's see what he does. So upgrades New Orleans for just the revenue. And when you're doubling that revenue, it makes sense to go for the upgrade. Runs for 260, pays it out, or 250 and pays it out. Ick. He is getting the run into New Orleans, and we now have a southern route from east to west. Running for 350, so the revenues are starting to really pick up. Pays it out. Southern Pacific, still got a ways to go for him to be able to link up to his destination. But he's almost there. We'll see if anybody wants to play a hardball with this track. Um, would be possible to keep it away. Um, and hurt the SP, but is it really worthwhile? Frank is so far behind. I don't imagine these players are really prioritizing hurting him. Runs for just 140, pays it out. GMO, um, upgraded New Orleans, now three holes there, and also um, increased revenue. So he's able to run through there and runs for 290. Wants to make sure he stays yellow, so he withholds that. Fort Worth, um, trainless. So it looks like we did eventually see the Fort Worth um, train shuffle, and he's going to be picking up a second, uh, the, uh, sorry, I should say the last 10 train. So it's going to be incumbent on the other players to push out these 12s. But again, Henry's so far ahead and has no train liability at this point. Um, I don't know if it's going to be possible for them to catch him. So upgrading into uh, Oklahoma City, and he does buy that last 10 train. MP, 2.5 trains, should have pretty good revenue. Um, and it's going to run for 4.90. We're into stock round 9. And $7,000 left in the bank. Could see the bank break if nobody brings out a 12. But with players motivated to stay yellow and having withheld as much as they do, I imagine at least one of these players is going to finagle a way to bring out the 12 train. Um, we have been favoring Henry's position in this game for... Um, some time now, he does have a pretty substantial net worth lead and has basically all the trains and track that he could want. Um, all of his companies are destinated and have pretty secure runs. So, and he's, you know, six shares, four shares ahead of his closest competitor. Comparing him to John, um, he has train liability remaining on the MP. Should be pretty easy for him to, you know, secure cash with continuing withholds, but that is money that is not paying into his coffers. Um, so 
I guess, tenuous. And he's uh, over $1,000 behind Henry, so probably going to be losing. Frank um, actually has managed to come out of last place. I think this is just a function of withholding on the MP from John. I don't think that Frank is actually um, in third place. He's still in last place. Um, and he has train liability on the SP. He has um, accumulated some company cash, so should be able to afford a 12 um, without too much pain, but um, is out of this game. And then George, technically second in net worth, but um, GMO and SLSF, um, the revenue in these two companies is probably going to be dwarfed by the KD with the 5 and the 8. Um, and he is six shares behind Henry, already $700 behind, so I think we will see Henry taking this game. On that note, is it worth continuing, or should we just call it for Henry? Um, $7,000 in the bank. There's not a whole lot left in this stock round. Doesn't look like anybody's set up for a dump. Um, and Henry, our share leader, is already at his cert limit. There's no shell yellow shares available. So we may just see some minor shuffling of stock portfolios. I think we can skip this stock round and just go right into the operating round. Um, doesn't look like all that much happened. Probably just everybody meeting their cert limits. And we're in operating round nine. We'll have three operations. Um, if nobody brings out a 12 train, we'll see the bank break. If someone does bring out the 12 train, um, there will be, it depends who does it. Um, there could be potentially two 12 train purchases if someone other than Frank brings out the 12, um, which would certainly inject enough cash into this game that I think we'd see another operation set. Um, but that would not, I don't think, op uh, upset the ultimate winner here, um, who will be Henry. So let's skip this operating round and just see if anybody's withholding to bring out the 12. Looks like nobody's withholding, and it looks like the 12 was not purchased um, since we still have five trains in the game. We've been favoring Henry, and... He is running for the most, so unless somebody withholds for the 12, um, this game's over and Henry wins. Only $4,000 left in the bank, so $3,000 were taken out. We should be seeing the game end here unless somebody has positioned to emergency by the 12, which it doesn't look like anybody has. So I think we can skip this operating round as well. And Henry running away with it, still running for the most. And five trains still exist. Nobody's withholding. Looks like they're content to just end this game. So we'll skip to the end. And Henry, as expected, wins it in a pretty convincing fashion. John brings up the rear. He was the cotton player. Um, so he's the player that um, raced across the map at the start of the game. Also was running the Ick and the MP. Some decent synergy at the end um, for some of his companies, but was too little too late. Um, George, he was the... SLSF player. So again, I think that, you know, missed out on some opportunities early in the game in terms of tokens. Um, don't really agree with these tokens in Little Rock and Memphis. Just didn't really seem to be all that consequential, particularly this token in Little Rock. I don't know what that did for him at all. Um, so some criticism there. And then Frank, um, he's been behind for a long time. We'd have to go back to the early game to see where he really fell behind. Um, but his uh, Southern Pacific just really struggled throughout the game. Looks like it eventually did make it into New Orleans, but the revenue there was just not worth the um, you know, cost in owning those shares in terms of tying up your cert limit. Um, and then his other company, the ATSF, um, I think we saw him... Now, he did take the token in Kansas City, so not a huge mistake there. I'm not entirely sure. We'd have to go back early to see where he fell behind. But regardless, well played to Henry, um, and he uh, was in the lead for a long time during this game, so no real surprise that he takes it. Um, as an aside, totally unrelated to this game, um, my content production for the channel has really fallen off the cliff um, in the last like four or five months. Um, just haven't really had the motivation to create a lot of videos, but I do have a new idea in terms of creating some strategy guides as opposed to, um, you know, commentated gameplay. It would be a different type of content for the channel, um, and I, I've been toying with that idea for um, several months now. I have made some progress in creating the um, outlines for those videos, but it would be a totally different type of content 
um, in terms of, you know, the editing requirements and the preparation, whereas I really just sit down and commentate these games on the fly. I don't um, do much preparation. Uh, for this type of video, I would have to do pretty extensive preparation. So I am um, working on that kind of informally um, just here and there. And uh, I think that will probably be the next uh, direction I take this channel, at least temporarily. But it's going to be kind of slow going. It just takes a long time to make those videos. So content is going to be remaining kind of sparse, I anticipate, for, you know, another month or two. But uh, eventually, hopefully, we can get some um, new games on the channel for everybody to watch. Uh, thanks for watching this one. Uh, well played to all the players. And Trey Tosca will be back in the future.